Well, week three of the college football season is here. Not exactly the week two that we would have expected on the plains. Auburn drops to one and one on the year with the ugly loss to Cal last Saturday. We will recap everything at Jordan-Hare Stadium as well as look ahead to Auburn's week three opponent in New Mexico, an opportunity for the Tigers to get it right in year two under Hugh Freeze. Let's go head-to-head. Welcome in, everybody. Cole Kublik, Simone Eli joining you for week three of the season, talking Auburn football. Cole, I texted you sometime Saturday and said, this is not going to be fun to talk about. And <laughs> I don't expect it to be fun to talk about because it hasn't been fun to relive and rewatch and just look back at what that was on the Plains against Cal. Auburn falls 21 to 14. What is your immediate reaction to this after going back and watching it and kind of breaking down film? Just disappointment more than anything. There was there was some effort that, that wasn't great, um, some execution that obviously was poor. And all of that said, you still had an opportunity late to be able to go down and find a way to win that football game, and you just couldn't do it. Um, yeah. You know, some things that we had maybe built some confidence in after week one showed that they might not be where we thought they were, specifically the offensive line. Um, I don't put as much on the quarterback as a lot of other folks are. Now, you throw four interceptions, you throw four interceptions. You're not going to be able right. to escape that or excuse that. But he was hit on two of those. I think the one late, you're just pressing, trying to make a play. Not the best throw, but is what it is. So um, there are parts of it that you watch back and you say, why couldn't you have just done this, leaned here a little bit more, tried this. Uh, defensively, I didn't think it was terrible, but there are some things that are a little bit concerning moving forward with how you're going to be able sure. to defend certain teams. So I think just disappointment more than anything else. I mean, you had this opportunity building some momentum after week one with this yeah. entire first month of the season at home, and now you took a lot of that and you just kind of burned it. And it's going to be tough to get a lot of that back because you had real momentum, and I don't know if you're going to be able to just grab that with what you've got coming up on the schedule the next few weeks. When you talk about Peyton Thorne, let's just jump right into the quarterback situation because Hugh Freeze addressed it in his Monday press conference, and he said the guy has earned the right, so to speak, to be the starter because of his practice performance, because what he's doing. Ultimately, that has to lead to results on the field. So it's not yeah. like he just gave him the stamp of approval and stamp of confidence forever moving forward. How do you read, do you read between the lines with what he said? Is it as straightforward as he said it that, hey, this is the guy, he has a shorter leash? I mean, again, I'm just kind of like, like summing up what he said necessarily, but how do you take Hugh Freeze's comments from week one or Monday? I think Coach, yeah, I think Coach Freeze looked at it, Simone, and, and understands that spring practice, all summer, fall practice, you put a lot of work into yeah. this being the leader of your football team, your starting quarterback. And to say after one bad game, just because of something that may have happened a year ago, we're going to throw that away and start over. That's a good point. There's a lot that goes into that. And it's it's kind of interesting to me that a lot of folks don't want to look at every position the way they look at that position. So you got a tackle that gets beat multiple times in pass pro, but I don't see a lot of people tweeting out and calling into radio shows saying, why is the next offensive tackle not coming in the game? You have receivers that shut down routes, but nobody's asking why those receivers still play and why are they in the game? So it, it's easy to point fingers at the quarterback. But there are portions of the offense that have been built around his skill set and what he can do because you expected him to be the starter. You sure. give him an opportunity to correct some of those mistakes. There were some things I thought he did well. He started out six of nine for, I think, 105 yards. Uh, I think I feel like he looked a little bit more – a little more confident with pulling the ball down and running it instead of being hesitant and waiting. And a couple yes. of the throws he did make early were good throws. And like I said, four interceptions never going to be excused – you wonder what the temperature of the team is. And that's where I think you and I, fans, we're never going to know exactly sure. what's going on. And a coach has to weigh before he makes that decision. Yeah, the most popular guy on the roster is always going to be the backup quarterback when you have something happening you know, that isn't going exactly the way that you envisioned it, especially when you look at all of what Auburn has invested, literally and figuratively, in their offensive playmakers. You want to see that be exactly what you envisioned it week in and week out. And so the Tigers start with, like you said, a really, really strong start. What changed? Why did things go off the rails? And then why was there never a spark of momentum on that side of the ball, it seemed like, throughout the entire game? Because in, in that offense, it's it's an explosive play offense, and you, you're going to push the ball down the field. Now, it's, it's still going to be a run-first offense, but you know what that sets up. And that's mm -hmm. probably the most confusing part to me, Simone, is, is where is Jarquez Hunter? And Because I think he mm – -hmm. 
is possibly your best football player. I don't think you could debate that he is one of, if not the most proven football player on that team. Yeah. And there have been bits and pieces of it. And I understand you had a bad fumble late, but you, this is a guy that I think you should be riding right now to then open things up for everybody else because he's durable. He, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can hurt you between the tackles, outside the tackles. I yeah. think he would open up more with Peyton Thorne's legs. He gives you more in the RPO game, and he gives you more shots down the field because people have to come to the box and respect the run. Uh, 13 touches, one reception. I just don't think it's enough. Now, the flip side of that is you only had 47, 49 plays in the game. Like, that's not a lot of snaps. So I think what Coach Freeze was thinking is we're really right. close on a lot of things. We've made some bad mistakes. We haven't protected our quarterback. If we can shore a few of those things up, we see where the opportunities are. We just need to go take advantage of it. They didn't take advantage of it. They continue to make mistakes, continue to not protect the quarterback, and never really leaned on the run. Now, you get to a point in the game where it's a bit of a dogfight, and you're yeah. then you're coming out back from behind. You can't just lean on the run anymore. You, you have to try to find something a little bit different. But I agree with Coach Freeze that the defense did – just about everything they needed to to win that football game. Now, you could say don't give up a couple scores. It's fine, but they gave him good field position, gave him opportunities. But I think he saw the opportunities and the things that were open on the field and mm -hmm. the things that they could possibly create if they executed well. Problem is they just didn't fix that execution in the game. Is There seems like there was kind of meltdown by some folks on social media. And that's just kind of, kind of how it goes, especially in SEC football. You have your ups and your downs. One second that you, you lose, it happens when every single fan base. It happens more in Auburn's fan base, unfortunately, for Tiger fans than they probably would like. Do you think that there needs to be this, you know, throw the baby away in the, with the bath or whatever the saying is and just get rid of everything and, you know, this isn't going to work and he freezes in the answer. I mean, that seems slightly overreaction. Is there, are there fixed slightly. things on both sides? <laughs> I mean, okay. I say that obviously being slightly dramatic, very dramatic, but do you think that there are several fixable elements that when we look at this six weeks down yeah. the road, Auburn is the type of Auburn contender that, that people hope, and feel a year or two under who free should be. Yeah, I would hope that folks don't look at this and and, and think that way. Um, if you want to think that way about a certain position or a certain guy or certain parts of a team, I get that. I understand that. And I do think that there are parts of it right now, quarterback, where most people have just – their minds are made up. that they, they don't really care to see improvement or think that it's going to get any better or has a chance to get any better. Um, but, no, I, I think that Hugh Freeze is a proven head coach. He's recruiting well. He's getting more talent. I mean, the, the, the roster has more talent than it's had in the last three, four years. So that part's been upgraded. Now you just got to find a way to put some good football together. And it's hard to do that when you have it played in games together. It just is. That's true. And that's not just the offensive line. It's quarterbacks. It's receivers. It's running backs. It's quarterbacks and running backs. Running backs and offensive line. You got to have a good feel for it. Auburn will be back home for a third straight of five straight to open the season. We talked two weeks ago about the advantages that come with being at home. I think we all kind of thought Auburn would be maybe 3-0 going to SEC play. They have a big opportunity here to right some wrongs, get some of that momentum back that, that we kind of felt in week one. Probably not all of it. You want to see, obviously, some of that come back to you. When New Mexico comes to town, they're going to be a 28-point underdog. What opportunity lies ahead when it comes to correcting wrongs and building momentum going into the sec play well i think number one you have an opportunity to go get on the same page and you have a chance to sort of redeem yourself build some confidence with the fan base and more importantly with each other with the team yeah. go play a game together put a strong performance together win the game by 35 45 points and then begin to understand that the level of competition is about to ramp up immensely but you have the opportunity to be prepared for that as well um now, I was never somebody that was scared of games or scared of opponents. I looked at those as opportunities. Like I wanted to go prove myself and my teammates mostly felt mm -hmm. that way also. So this group's got to find a little bit of leadership, some guys that have a little bit of accountability and are not going to let the guys sulk and not going to let the guys feel sorry for themselves, which I imagine is tough this day and age. As many voices as you hear on social media, from handlers, agents, people that are around you, no it's got to be, that. it's more difficult than when I played. I understand that, but there's somebody has to step up in that facility in that locker room and give guys the vote of confidence that they can go out and be different this week. And then you do it once it can be contagious. Then you do it twice and more people believe and you continue to get on the same page. I will say some of my concern is hearing some comments about sort of subtracting things out of the playbook. 
and limiting the playbook moving forward, I, I don't feel like that is the best avenue personally. That's just me. Um, I feel like that maybe try to do certain things that are the same play different ways. So become more creative with the same things in different ways. Cole, I, I know it's kind of tricky sometimes to pick games when it comes to actual scores. I think we both feel good about Auburn walking away with a win here. Is there a score that you like and what this would look like at the end? I mean, you, you give me like 42 I don't want to speak to for six. you. I don't, I don't, okay, I don't find what, 42-6? 42-6 is what I'm going to go with, yes. Wow, that's strong. <laughs> Simone, this team has given up 1194 yards in two games. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying it's strong. <laughs> so I in the, I think you'll see an emphasis on the run game first. I think you will see a yeah. an offensive line that has a little bit more help in being able to do that, be it formationally or maybe with tempo, sure. other things of that nature. And then I think you'll see some of the other things down the field. Guys, we're looking forward to this one. It'll be a 6.30 kick at Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn and New Mexico, as they look to uh, get back on track before beginning SEC play. For Cole Kublik, I'm Simone Eli. We'll see you for week four. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers.